Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. It's been a while since I've produced one. It's the end of the month, so time for an energy update. I've, I've actually got two videos to produce today, or hopefully to record today. One covering the Give Energy battery, and I've now had it four months, so it's time for a four month review. And also, as I said, the end of month statistics. So let's do the end of month statistics first. Well, the first thing to say about January is uh, the weather's changed, hasn't it? So the days are getting lighter and brighter, but that's, that's had a positive effect that I'm noticing that we're generating energy at times when it was previously dark and there was no generation. But then looking back at the statistics for the month, we haven't generated that much. So it hasn't made that much of a tangible difference. So it's the first signs of spring. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel warmer. It doesn't feel brighter. It doesn't feel like we've had lots of energy. But there's definitely the signs there that more energy is on the way. So overall, statistically, January looks like it wasn't as good as last January. And I think that's going to be a common theme because last year was an incredible year for solar energy. We had a huge amount of warm, bright, dry days all the way from February. So I'm not really expecting many months coming ahead to beat that. Um, if we did, uh, I guess we're going to have to have a heat wave or something, aren't we? But at least January's this year, January 2021, we had slightly better generation than December. So there are definitely signs of improvement. So anyway, format wise, you know, I like to mix it up. I like to do different things, film in different locations. So um, today, what I thought was uh, because we all like sharing the data and comparing the data and seeing who's generated more and who's used more or less energy, those sort of things. It's a bit like a game of top trumps, isn't it? So I thought I'd present the data in the format of top trump cards. So the question is, if you had your own cards, would you beat me on any of these values? Right, let's get straight into it and start off with solar generation. Okay, solar generation. So from our two arrays, if you followed my videos before, you know I have two arrays, one with a solace inverter, one with a solar edge inverter. In total, they come to 6.3 kilowatts peak of uh, solar panels. We generated 132.2 kilowatt hours on the Solus, 74.1 kilowatt hours on the Solar Edge, and that's a total of 206.3 kilowatt hours in total for the month of January. So if we look at this combined chart here, you can see that January 2021 is one of the lowest generating months that I've had so far. It's difficult to see the exact amount there, but you can see it's a little bit more than last month, but it's not quite as good as last January. If we have a look at the Solace chart here, it's showing on a day by day basis why we've generated so little over the month. If you count up those high spikes, there's only seven or eight days where we had a decent amount of sunshine and a decent amount of energy. The rest were exceedingly low, you know, quite a few days there with less than one kilowatt hour generated from the array. Moving on to grid use, this is a very topical one for me this month because I'm a new customer to Octopus Energy over the last couple of months. So I'm very interested in the Octopus Agile product and how that's working out. And I'll talk about that in just a moment, but the numbers, 101 kilowatt hours imported, that's pretty low for me uh, compared to other winters. And uh, exported, 22 kilowatt hours, a little bit less than last month. The monthly cost, £18.22. That includes the standing charge, £18.22. That really shows what a low user we are and how well this system, even with low generation, is working. And the average unit cost, yeah, an expensive 11 pence a kilowatt hour was the best I could do on Agile. And if we look at the Go Agile app here, it shows that if I had have been on the Go tariff instead of the Agile tariff, then I could have saved a pound. Because I'm such a low user of energy, that's why it's not really making a big difference to me. And that's why I'm not moving across to the Go tariff. I'm staying with Agile. It's probably worth saying right now that the Octopus Agile prices that I'm seeing this month are very high. Um, they have been concerning for some people and some people are moving across to the Go tariff. If you're thinking about going with Octopus or you've used my referral code, a few of you have, thank you very much for that. If it's concerning at all that the prices are high, I would just say that it shows that the product works. When the wholesale prices are higher, the fees are a little bit higher. When the wholesale prices are lower, you benefit from that. And the average works out that you are gaining. So even though these have been extremely high prices of late, I've still saved dramatically. My average is 11 pence a kilowatt hour, and I was paying 16, 17 pence a kilowatt hour with bulb. It really shows how it works. 
Looking at December's data, you can see that we used 165 kilowatt hours of energy, a good 63 more than this month, but the price that we paid was only £15.22. So we used more energy, but we paid less money for it. That's one, because the prices are higher in January, but two, because we had that plunge price um, period in December where we got energy for free, or they even paid us. So that's why it was less, and that's why I'm still happy to stay with Agile. One of the side effects that I'm seeing with these higher prices is, as per this example here, if you look down this list of prices, the cheapest is about half past 11 at night at 10.58 pence per kilowatt hour. So if I charge my battery at 10.5 pence per kilowatt hour, and then I add in 30% for the losses of importing the energy into the battery and then converting it back out and the losses of a little bit of export and import while balancing the grid, I work out that's roughly about 30%. So basically, if I use that energy that I paid 10.5 pence for and use it to not consume energy from the grid at anything less than 13 to 14 pence a kilowatt hour, I'm actually losing out. So in this example here from these prices, there's no point in me charging the battery because I might as well consume the grid energy at the prices of 11 and 12 pence. It's cheaper to do that than have charged at 10 and a half and then incur the extra losses as well. I hope that makes sense. But basically there are moments where it's best not to charge the battery. And that's just because there isn't a big differential between the cheapest price and the price that I've got to pay during the day. One of the great things about this Go Agile app is that you can configure it to look at the Go Faster tariff, not just the Go tariff. So you can do a comparison to the tariff that you really want to move to. You can also load shift. You can change where you charge the car, your hot water or charge the battery. You can change those time periods to be inside the Go time period. So you get a very precise comparison about what it would be like if you had the other tariff. So I really do like that. So just to demonstrate that, I've changed the settings now to look at the Go tariff, not the Go Faster one. And now it's showing that Go is actually more expensive for me. So it shows, doesn't it? It's neither here nor there. You know, Agile and Go for me is about the same. It's within a pound either way. So moving on to the My Energy Zappy data for my car charging, charging my Mini Electric. You can see there that I've charged 11.2 kilowatt hours. Yeah, that's only 40 to 50 miles of energy, isn't it? Not very much at all. But I'm quite surprised there that 25% of that was from the grid. We must have had some really cloudy days for it to be that inefficient because normally I'm getting 80 to 90%. It really is sad just to see my Mini sat on the driveway not being driven. Basically, you know, I don't work, I'm not an essential worker, I don't have very many essential trips, so I don't have any reason to go out other than for pure fun, and that's not the right thing to do at the moment. So with low solar generation, what it means is I'm heating my hot water using my oil boiler for most days. But on the days where we have had some sunshine, I've put 42 kilowatt hours into the Eddy device to heat the hot water using the immersion heater. And 8 kilowatt hours came from the battery or a grid boost. So there must have been some cheap energy on one day in January. A total of 50 kilowatt hours of energy for heating hot water. And finally, the battery data. So we've got a Give Energy battery. It's a 3 kilowatt AC coupled system. Um, it's 5.23 kilowatt hours of capacity. Usable size, though, is 4.44 kilowatt hours. That's about 85% is what we can get the depth of discharge down to. One of the things I'm not so keen of with the Give Energy battery is if I want to change that depth of discharge, I have to call them and they have to do it. It's not something that's within my control as the user and owner of the battery. And I think it should be. I don't like the idea of having to call another company and ask permission to reduce the depth of discharge. It's my battery. I should be able to do what I want with it. Given we used about 100 kilowatt hours of grid energy this month, it's interesting to see that we actually charged the battery, 96.9 kilowatt hours. Now again, most of that would have been from solar energy, but very interesting to see that the two are comparable. And lastly, we discharged 88.8 .8 kilowatt hours from the battery during the month. Now, obviously, remember that from the start of the month to the end of the month, the state of charge of the battery might have been different. So we can't compare those two numbers to see what the efficiency was like. I've quickly knocked this graph up showing the amount of kilowatt hours we consumed on a daily basis going back a couple of years. And you can see at this point here, that's where we installed the first battery. That was the pure drive battery that we had in about March last year. If we zoom in now, 
it's really clear to see what the difference was like when we didn't have a battery to having a battery installed. But again, there was a lot of solar energy at that time. It was here that we installed this Give Energy battery. And as you can see, it's using slightly more grid energy. So if we zoom in to look at that again, I think this final chart zoomed in now. We're on the left hand side. You can see a winter period before we had a solar battery installed. And on the right hand side, you can see what it's like with the Give Energy battery during winter. We're actually using more kilowatt hours from the grid now with a battery. And I think that's because when you import the energy to the battery, you're incurring some losses and I think overall the round trip efficiency is between 25 to 30 percent of extra energy you need to put into the battery to get back out again. So that's what you can see in this graph that we're having to use more energy than if we didn't have a battery. But the thing is we're charging using cheaper energy. So so long as it's more than 30 percent cheaper we're gaining and that's why my electricity bills have come down. I think there's a few stories worth sharing on the day by day data too. So looking at this from the Go Agile app, I can see in the greeny blue um, bars, that's my energy usage, the blue line, that's the price of the Agile rate and the greenish line, that's the rate of the Go tariff. So you can see the scale on the left hand side is the price per kilowatt hour, the scale on the right hand side is the amount of kilowatt hours consumed. 1st of January, we only consumed 2.8 kilowatt hours of energy, and we did a little bit of charging just before the peak period around 3 o'clock. The next day, we did a little bit of charging overnight at the lowest point. Interesting that those low points on Agile are just after the go tariff period of low values, and that seems to be a regular trend, that the Agile price is right at the end of that period. The days highlighted in red like this are indicating where it thinks that the GO tariff would have been cheaper for me. Uh, this is one penny cheaper, it thinks. But you can see there the price lines of the GO tariff and the Agile tariff. The reason why GO was a little bit better was because Agile was quite high. In fact, more expensive than the GO tariff for much of the day. For me, this is quite a high usage day with over seven kilowatt hours of energy from the grid. You can see we're charging in the morning and also at the end of the day as well. So I think it was hard to find a rate that was quite cheap, lower than 10 pence a kilowatt hour. Another red day where the GO tariff would have been cheaper. You can see there that the Agile price throughout the day was very, very high at 20 pence a kilowatt hour and then 35 pence a kilowatt hour in the peak period. But thankfully with the battery, I didn't consume very much energy at all. I only spent 41 pence that day. And I think this highlights what I'm trying to achieve with energy independence. I've got my own solar panels producing my own energy. And with a home storage battery, I can protect myself from energy price rises. So even when energy prices are really high like they are on this day, I'm not consuming the energy from the grid. So it's not costing me anything. I don't mind if the energy prices go up for a while. Looks like we've got a couple of low usage days here on the 9th and 10th of January. So I didn't need to charge overnight. I could rely on solar energy. Small amount of charging on the 11th, just a one half hour slot there, charging at about 1.4 kilowatt hours. And the following day, the 12th, it looks like we made it throughout the day without charging, but just charged at the end of the day. So I'm mixing it up, charging in the beginning of the day when it's cheap or sometimes at the end of the day. Love it or hate it, this is what you get with Octopus Agile, that the cheap energy varies when it is. So you have to change your timers if you really do want to optimize it as much as possible. As I've said before, I could automate it using the um, feature here with the Give Energy battery, but that hands over control to Octopus to do the charging, and it won't do what I want, which is on occasions, don't charge. So depending on the weather forecast for the next day, I'm anticipating how much solar energy I'm going to have spare to charge the battery with. And on days like this here on the 21st, I'm charging in three half hour slots. For on other days like this one on the 22nd, I'm only using two half hour slots. So I'm anticipating a little bit more solar energy. And at the end of the month, we had a few more days of really high agile prices, but I think there was a little bit of sunshine on those days. So I really didn't need the energy. I didn't do any charging either. And we avoided that high price period. 
On the 26th and 27th of January, it looked like the cheapest period was actually at midnight, crossing the boundaries. But then on the 28th, we've got some cheaper energy under 10 pence a kilowatt hour on the next couple of days. And this was a rarity. So it's taken until the end of January before we're now seeing some cheaper rates returning. And lastly, you'll have to laugh at this one. I was setting the timers, trying to set them to come on at 8 o'clock at night, and I set it to 8 o'clock in the morning instead. And as a result, I turned the battery off exactly at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and didn't notice until 7 o'clock. So we consumed energy throughout the peak period. But thankfully, again, we used so little energy, it didn't cost very much. I think what all this proves to me is that setting timers on a daily basis isn't that easy of a task. And if the interface isn't really slick and really easy to use, this is a data-driven interface. It's not graphical, it's not easy to use. It could be simpler. So from my point of view on this, if I was doing this again next year, I think I'll swap to the Go tariff and just do my charging at a set time overnight. It is a lot simpler, even if it is a little bit more expensive here or there. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope there was some useful information. It's always full of data, full of thoughts. And again, it's not just about the data. For me, it's about the experience because this still feels new to me. I've only had solar energy for a couple of years and I'm still getting to grips with what it feels like and how it's changing from month to month. So I find that these videos really help in presenting how it's going to feel if you invest five, ten, fifteen thousand pounds in renewable energy products in uh, expensive solutions for your home? What will it feel like? Will it feel good? Will you get benefit? And will you be disappointed with those purchases? So sharing everything that I go through helps with that, helps to give confidence for other people to invest. And that's why I put these videos out, because I absolutely love having solar energy. I absolutely love having an electric car with a zappy charger and diverting energy from solar into hot water from my eddy diverter. So I love all of those things. They really add to your life and they, they really... I don't know, I guess I'm getting more responsible and uh, more into the thought of looking after our environment and doing the right things. Um, I certainly didn't before I had an electric car, before I had solar, so this is a transition for me and I like to share that and hope to encourage more people to do the same because it does feel good. It's not just about being hippie green freaks. Um, this is really good stuff. It's good for everything. It's good for the economy, it's good for you, it's good for your pocket, it's good for the environment. It's just positivity, so it is a really good thing to have in your life and to share. So again, thank you for watching, thank you for sharing these videos. Click subscribe and like if you haven't already on the video, you have watched it all the way through to the end. So thank you very much. See you again soon for another video. Take care. Bye for now.